Steve. How are we doing today? You guys had Tobin here for a while. I, mean, I, was, I, I was standing out there. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, on to the next one. I, I don't have, I don't have, I'll, let, I'll just open up for questions. Um, we just got done with our walkthrough and we're anxious to get out there and do some third down today. Are you, uh, are you surprised at all with how your defense is playing first, uh, first three games in or this is what you expect? Uh, listen, I'm always of the mindset that we can play better, so I'd like to see us do some things, but I'd like to see us finish that game better and actually finish all the games better because if I go back to all three of them, uh, we gave up a touchdown in Arizona at the end. didn't mean much. Um, the one against the Chargers did mean something. You know, we're onside kick away from being back out there again, and certainly we wanted to play better at the end of this game. I mean, there's a lot of good things in there before that, but... I'm, we're going to be hard on each other, and that would be the thing I'd be pointing to. You had said going back to OTAs, you were kind of racing the clock to get everything ready for the regular season. Now, through three games, are, are you, you feel like you guys are maybe ahead of that schedule, on schedule, behind schedule? How, how yeah, you um, yeah. I don't, it's, it's hard for me to listen. I always want to be at gear ten on day one, you know. Um, but I'm realistic enough to know that this, in this league, it you know it takes a little time. I've always said that it takes the first quarter of the season to figure out what you have in players and where you should put them. We got a couple, three pieces missing. Um, you know, we got to get Trent back and Mike Dana, right? Willie's not here right now, so we want to get those pieces back in there. But the guys that have stepped on, stepped up and done a nice job. You blitzed a little more, I think, against Andy than you normally do. Was that the game plan, or was it just because, hey, this is working well? Yeah, I mean, we, we blitzed early and had some success, and we were just kind of the, you know, we wanted to attack that old line a little bit. and. Some of the things they had or had not done, we had seen, and most of them worked out pretty good. Coach, every year I ask you about Tom Brady, and, and here you go again. Now. <laughs> Maybe you didn't have to ask me last year because we didn't play That's him, right. right? Yeah. But every time you play, I ask yeah. you about Tom Brady. Um, the guy keep, keeps getting older, but he still keeps producing. So any let up in no. anything you see with this? That the, and we were talking about it. I mean, uh, you know, we've played other quarter, quarterbacks that have been in the league a long time. I'm Ticking my words uh, carefully here. And normally you'd see a drop off in arm strength or they don't throw it to the sideline and, you know, you can pack it in, et cetera, et cetera. Not so with Tom. I, I, I think he's throwing the ball as good as he ever has. He's accurate as he ever has been. And he's still throwing the ball deep. I don't see any – and he's always been a sit in the pocket, on the spot, relied on his arm strength. That hasn't changed. It's not like he ever relied on, you know, being a – Guy that got out of the pocket, so he's the same threat he's always been, in my opinion. So you the NFL the just announced that the game will be played in Tampa. Now, now that you know where you're going, how, how much can you now focus on the details as opposed to wondering where you're playing? Yeah, we never had that in our mind, to be honest with you. Um, Coach Reed, I'm sure, hit it. Um, we just want to line up and play. The way I look at it is we were going to get on a plane no matter what. <laughs> you know, in this league, you get on the plane, and wherever you land, you go play the game. So it really didn't. I don't think our guys had that on their mind, to be honest with you. To follow up on what he asked about the blitz, and kind of Bryce was about asking you to give away Steve's stuff, but it, does this week to week from the Colts to, to Tom Brady sort of indicate just how much you sometimes have to change things up from week to week? I mean, Tom's not typically a guy you can bring a delayed linebacker. Yeah. Person. Listen, it's always uh, week to week, depending on the team you're playing, and certainly the quarterback's the, the first guy, right? What can he do, can't do, and design your game plan around that. So it will be week to week. I mean, by nature, it'd be nice to always bring a lot of pressure. I just think it challenges all lines and quarterbacks. But he's one of those guys that figures it out pretty quick. Uh, so you got to pick your spots. What's the biggest challenge that you're going to face him? Obviously, the last time you played him in the Super Bowl, he had Antonio Brown, he had Gronkowski. Yeah. He'll be they'll be bringing Mike Evans back. I think because yeah. Godwin may or may not be playing this game. So what what, what type of challenge is differently? Because he's someone that gets the ball out within. You know, two seconds. That's the, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, it doesn't matter who he's throwing to. He gets it out really quick, so it makes it t hard to get him off the spot, which is what everybody says they want to do to Tom Brady, right? Um, and I'll tell you what, I, I, they still got players out there that I, obviously Mike's coming back, right, Mike Evans. And I think the tight end's really good. I think Cole Beasley will continue to be what he is. He's only was there a week, and the very first pass they, he threw to him was right on target. And... That may, I mean, he just looked, they just looked natural there together. So I think he's got plenty of weapons. Um, it, it's going to be, like we talked about it in the meeting, it's, it's going to be about, first we're going to stop the run game because, <laughs> you know, I don't want to forget about that because uh, Tom Brady is smart enough to take what, what you give him and, you know, he'll, he'll keep the big horse cranking. And then um, 
the other part of it is trying to affect, I always say, try to affect his targets, and that's what we try to do. Do you, do you, do you come to learn what, what Chris Jones said, and, and whether you have or haven't, what, what's your message to him or lesson? Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not, I mean, I never went down that road. I mean, that's the head coach's uh, area. Um, the way I look at it is we all learn from it. And I think that's what Chris said. I thought Chris handled it really good. Uh, and then we move on. There's not much more, much more we can do about it now. I mean, the, the way... The lesson is, though, don't talk. I mean, the lesson is... Yeah, I mean, again, it's a, it's a heated emotional game, right? But, um, I mean, that would, be, that would be what I would take from it, you know. How did you evaluate uh, Darius Harris? What did he do yeah. well? What can he do a little bit better? I'm glad you brought him up. I thought he did a really nice job. I mean, to... I'm really happy for him and the years he's been here and it's been like this and then he gets an opportunity to go out there and he knows he's going to play 60 some odd plays in the game and I thought he played real effective. I can only think of one play where I think he could have been better on and he, and he works really well with Nick. Like They're both really intelligent players so they work really well together. I know he's uh, played 40 some in the past but that's been a couple of years. Did you learn anything Talking about, about Darius? Him? Yeah. Did you yeah. learn anything about him specifically I, on Sunday or? or? Uh, I'll tell you, I'd say no only in that because I think he's been on a uphill trajectory since this whole training camp off season. I just have seen a different man, even when he came back, working out the whole thing. It's just, he just looks, he, he was different before, and I kind of expected him to go in there and do a good job, and he did. He really did. Steve, uh, on the subject of the blitz that they were talking about, the trend in the league, at least last year, I don't know where we are, just three games in, but was that... Less and less splits, right? Dropping, dropping eight, even just coming with three. Yeah. Is that you know? Are you the change up to everybody else's fastball when you do that? Is that something you take into account when you're scheming that the rest of the league is coming with less and dropping? More? Yeah, I don't get into league um, trends to be quite honest with you. I just sometimes sometimes you can fall in a trap there. I think it's more about the guys you have, what you can and can't do, and then the people you're going against. Um, I don't know. I haven't studied it either. Um, but part of it's probably because of these quarterbacks get it out fast, and they're all athletic. A lot of them uh, nowadays, when you when you bring people and can get a free runner, they make you miss because they're so. You can think of all those quarterbacks I'm talking about, right? Uh, so maybe that's got people backing off a little bit. How, how do you feel about your pass rush when you're not blitzing? When you're. Uh, listen, um, we've got. I thought I thought Frank had a really good game. Um, I thought Frank did some things power-wise that I hadn't seen in a while, and I told him that. I think he's really effective when he does that. And Chris, you know, Chris was putting heat on guys. I just think it's where it needs to be. It's got to get better and better. We've got to get better at everything, um, Coach, but not, not a weakness in any way. It, the, the response, like after the penalty, you guys still had a chance to stop him. Is that yeah. the disappointment factor? And how yeah. hard is it for a, a group of guys to not – to put that part away and say we still have Yeah, that's down. part of the lesson, right? I mean, so, okay, it was disappointing. It was a third and whatever, and uh, we had them backed up. They were going to punt the whole thing, and then everybody in their mind is, great, we stopped them. And, okay, it changed. Well, there's 428 on the board, or 438 or what it was, and we're up by four. It's still our job to seal the game. I mean, they could have, uh, I don't know, anything could have happened. They could have got the ball right back, or we would have been in the same situation. I mean, we were probably going to go, might have gone back out there, trying to protect the four-point lead anyway. And that's part of the job of the defense to stop. That was the disappointing. I, I thought we, it was a really good performance, right, for three and a half quarters. And then to have not done that at the end, that was the biggest disappointment. So we're in here grinding away, trying to make sure that doesn't happen again. Coach, you had, you had uh, the last couple of seasons, Terrell Suggs, you know, Melvin Ingram, and now you've got Carlos Dunlap coming in. Talk about his impact and what he's kind of done. Right yeah. Clark and how he had a good game. What is Carlos? Yeah, Carlos did a really nice job, and the thing, Carlos, you know, the whole scheme's new to him, but he's a pro. I watch him in our unit meetings, and not only does he take notes and he's cerebral, but he asks questions, and he comes up with really good points, and he's not afraid to chime in and say, you know, what about that? He's, he's really good that way, uh, and he's made some really important plays for us. I mean, that sack fumble he had was just a relentless pass rush, and he's long, you know, so I, we're, we're real glad we have him, yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Okay, appreciate it. Yeah, you got it.